In the current era of Formula One, which is defined by extremely strict and highly prescriptive technical regulations, even the smallest and most seemingly marginal technical refinements can have a decisive impact on overall performance, often becoming the difference between winning a Grand Prix and finishing off the podium. As the 2025 Formula One World Championship represents the final phase of what is commonly referred to as the ground effect era, teams are capitalizing on every development opportunity available before the sweeping regulatory changes planned for 2026. One of the greatest and most complex challenges facing today's Formula One single-seaters lies in maintaining optimal aerodynamic balance and stability throughout all phases of driving, whether the car is braking heavily into a corner, accelerating hard on corner exit, navigating mid-corner load transfers, or flying down long straights. The airflow channeled underneath the car's floor, which generates low pressure and thus aerodynamic downforce, is the primary source of grip for these machines. Any disruption or alteration to this underfloor airflow can lead to sudden, unpredictable, and often undesirable changes in the handling characteristics of the car, significantly impacting lap time and driver confidence. Among the many technical solutions used to control these phenomena, two concepts are particularly critical when it comes to a car's dynamic behavior under load, anti-dive and anti-squat systems. But what do these terms really mean in practical terms, and which teams have best optimized these solutions during the course of the 2025 Formula One season? The anti-dive mechanism is a system that involves the geometry of the front suspension and is specifically engineered to minimize the amount of nosedive the car experiences during heavy braking phases. This is accomplished by redirecting a portion of the longitudinal braking forces through the suspension arms, rather than allowing the full load to compress the springs. This load distribution reduces vertical movement at the front end, by keeping the nose of the car more stable and preventing excessive pitching forward under braking, the vehicle achieves significantly enhanced stability and reactivity. This steadier front-end platform also maintains a more consistent aerodynamic profile, which is essential in preserving downforce levels during deceleration. Furthermore, this contributes to reduced risk of front tire lockups, a frequent issue when excessive weight transfer overloads the front axle. Anti-dive effect is generally quantified as a percentage, where 100% anti-dive implies that there is virtually no movement in the front suspension under braking, providing a rigid platform. The anti-squat system operates on a similar principle to anti-dive, but is applied to the rear axle. It is active during acceleration and serves the purpose of limiting the vertical compression, or squat, of the rear end of the car. Like anti-dive, it achieves this effect by redirecting part of the longitudinal acceleration forces through the suspension arms, rather than allowing full compression of the rear suspension springs. This stabilizes the rear of the car, especially in the moments immediately after corner exit when traction is crucial. A rear that maintains its ride height better allows the aerodynamic flow under the rear diffuser to remain undisturbed, which in turn maximizes downforce and stability. The result is superior traction, improved grip during power delivery, and a car that remains predictable under load, factors that are vital during aggressive throttle applications on corner exit. So how are anti-dive and anti-squat mechanically implemented? The core of any effective anti-dive or anti-squat system lies in the precise geometry of the suspension components, particularly the positioning, inclination, and anchor points of the upper and lower wishbones, also referred to as suspension arms. When these components are strategically designed with optimized angles, they redirect loads in a way that reduces vertical chassis movement under longitudinal forces. A rigid suspension setup combined with kinematic precision allows for force transmission without excessive flex, thereby preserving the ride height and aerodynamic balance of the car during dynamic load shifts. These systems contribute to overall platform stability which is especially critical in an era where floor-generated downforce is the primary aerodynamic contributor. Utilizing anti-dive and anti-squat systems effectively provides multiple performance advantages. One of the key benefits is improved chassis stability, particularly during transitions between braking and acceleration. With reduced pitching motions, the aerodynamic airflow underneath the car remains more consistent, which helps maintain downforce levels and cornering performance. Another significant advantage is improved driver sensitivity and feedback. 
a more stable and predictable car inspires confidence behind the wheel and allows drivers to push closer to the limit with greater precision. When a car reacts predictably to braking and acceleration inputs, the driver can maximize both entry and exit performance. Additionally, there is a marked improvement in traction and overall handling balance. Anti-squat geometry enhances rear-end grip during acceleration phases by reducing vertical compression, while anti-dive geometry improves the front-end platform during braking, allowing for sharper turn-in and greater stability as the car enters corners. In the 2025 Formula One season, three teams have clearly emerged as leaders in the development and refinement of anti-dive and anti-squat systems through advanced suspension geometries. McLaren, with their 2025 Challenger, the MCL39, has introduced a front suspension layout that utilizes a pull rod configuration combined with aggressively inclined suspension arms. This design heavily emphasizes the anti-dive effect, resulting in a particularly stiff and responsive front end. However, one potential drawback of such a rigid setup is the difficulty of bringing the front tires into their optimal temperature window on certain circuits. To address this issue, McLaren has implemented a highly advanced thermal transfer system that redirects heat from the front corner assembly to the tire surface, ensuring consistent tire performance across a variety of track conditions. Mercedes, with the W16, has taken a comprehensive approach by refining not only anti-dive and anti-squat, but also anti-lift characteristics. This was accomplished through an extensive realignment of suspension mounting points, including those connected to the Mercedes power unit. The result of this meticulous work is a substantial reduction in pitch and vertical oscillations, which translates into enhanced aerodynamic stability and a more consistent aerodynamic platform across a range of driving conditions. Ferrari, with its 2025 car, the SF25, focused extensively on anti-squat development during the previous season with the SF24. That effort led to a car with improved traction and greater stability during acceleration. In 2025, Ferrari has worked to improve the anti-dive characteristics by designing a new front suspension. However, the Marinello-based team has struggled to strike the right balance between the front and rear systems, leading to a car that sometimes lacks harmony between braking stability and traction. It is also important to mention Red Bull, which had already showcased extraordinary suspension innovation with the Red Bull RB19 during the 2023 Formula One season. The Milton Keynes-based team developed a remarkably refined suspension setup that was perfectly suited to the aggressive driving style of reigning world champion Max Verstappen. While extremely effective, Red Bull's setup was also highly specialized and less adaptable to different driver styles, underlining the team's consistent technical excellence in this area. Beginning with the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa-Francorchamps, Ferrari is set to introduce a major and much-anticipated technical upgrade aimed at addressing some of the structural shortcomings that have limited rear-end grip, drivability, and corner exit stability. After an intensive development cycle spanning more than three months at their Marinello headquarters, Ferrari will debut a completely revised rear-end assembly. Among the key modifications are structural reinforcements to the gearbox casing, aimed at eliminating torsional flex under load, and a redesigned suspension linkage system that ensures more even distribution of forces across the rear axle. Ferrari's new rear-end update is therefore designed to restore overall balance, while the fundamental geometry of the rear suspension remains largely unchanged. Retaining the use of low-mounted pushrods and the same rocker arm layout, Ferrari's engineers have reworked the wishbone arms. The forward suspension arm has been repositioned slightly further forward, while the rearward arm has been shortened. This new configuration reduces torsional loads and provides improved mechanical grip at the rear, giving the car a more stable and planted rear end during high-speed transitions. This technical update represents Ferrari's attempt to achieve better overall car balance, counterbalancing a front end that may be overly focused on anti-dive with a rear that previously emphasized anti-squat too heavily. By harmonizing these two critical elements, the team hopes to deliver more consistent performance across varying track layouts and driving conditions. The target is clear, to offer Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton, Ferrari's 2025 driver lineup, a more predictable and stable platform from which to compete at the highest level.